a energy intensive activity of pushing the mower to less and less and less. And so activity has been engineered out of our life. I used to laugh at people. I'd say, oh, look at that goofy person. They got a remote control for their garage door. Well, I don't laugh so much anymore because what's in my car? Of course, the remote control for the garage door. So, so we now live in a culture that used to give us opportunities to be active, basically vaporized over the last 30 to 40 years. Now, when it comes to strength training, let's say you stretch yourself and you go get a reliable resource on strength training. Say, I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna crack this code. I'm gonna do it. And you get the best advice on the planet, which probably comes from the American College of Sports Medicine. It's the largest group of exercise scientists in the world. They issue formal exercise guidelines. They said, let me see what these guys are saying about this. If you go to their resistance exercise section, you're gonna see 21 different variables that you have to figure out that they're gonna give you general guides on. Okay, well, let's see. Um, how much weight should I lift to start? What exercises should I do? What machines should I do? Should I do free weights, dumbbells, barbells, suspension training? Uh, body weight exercises, how many reps, when do I change the weight, how much do I go up by, how many days do I do it, do I do a split routine, a whole body routine. I mean, there are dozens of questions that come up just to do a simple strength workout. A lot of moving parts to it. So it makes sense. I always tell people, hey, if you come in here, Evan, and you haven't been strength trained, it just makes sense that you're not strengthening because there are too many balls to juggle for the average human to figure it out on their own. If you walk into most fitness centers, it is a circus act to see what's happening. The people who are strength training, you just have to say, what on earth are they doing? This is not evidence-based strength training. They're doing something, but it certainly isn't evidence-based strength training. So with all due respect to the guidelines that are established, wouldn't you guys agree? It's easy to go take a walk. Let's say Pat says, I'm gonna go get a walk. Great, good. It's, it's hard to mess that up. But to go into a gymnasium and try to assemble a safe, efficient, effective workout and do it consistently without killing yourself, that's a whole nother ball game. So the point is we have an unsupportive environment, right? Uh, we have energy conserving devices everywhere, right? I mean, we now have remote controls for the remote control, for heaven's sakes. I mean, I can't, I, it's too much to ask Dan to step over four feet to get this remote control. He's got to use the master remote control so he doesn't burn three calories in the process. So we have a, a culture engineered around energy conserving devices and we have a new behavior that is really difficult to figure out to do it safely and efficiently. So it makes sense that people aren't living a osteoporosis prevention lifestyle. So my, the point here is that you're not doing anything wrong, we're just living our lives as normal people and it's a difficult thing to do over time. Now, having said that, what are two things you should know? Everyone should know. Well, you have two kinds of cells in your bones, they're called Osteoblasts, these are the bone building cells, and then osteoclasts, these are the bone resorbing uh, <coughs> cells. They break down bone tissue. So your skeleton is always being broken down and built up. Every year or so you have a new femur in your leg. All of the, if I look at, if I take Pat's femur out of his leg right now and just look at it, what I'll see, and I set it off to the side, and I see in a year from now, <coughs> all of that bone will have been broken down and replaced with fresh new bone tissue. So bones are constantly turning over, breaking down, building up. This is good for us, because it means we have the chance to always build new skeletal tissue, you know, increase what we call the bone mineral matrix. And so we know that there's a way to increase the osteoblast activity, the bone building cells. We can't really modify the osteoclast. In fact, those get modified with anti-resorptive drugs. These are the drugs on the market that are usually used to treat osteoporosis. They're all sort of targeted at suppressing osteoclast activity, which is okay, but if there's a natural, good for you, healthy way to build more bone tissue, what I can do is what? Increase bone mineral density. We see this with our clients. We get people come in with their T-scores. Look, 5% increase, 10% increase. Femur is thicker, it's stronger. My spine is healthier because of my strength workout. So, what we want to do is understand this dynamic. It's happening all the time. And know that is there a way to increase the osteoblast? Well, of course, the answer is yes, right? In the late 1800s, a German physician by the name of Julius Wolff, no relation to Richard Wolff, but Julius discovered that bones respond to the load that they're exposed to. This is fascinating. They respond to the load they're exposed to. So if you load a bone, if you put pressure, compressive force on a bone, it gets denser and thicker. And 
so what he realized, what he discovered is that bigger, stronger muscles contribute to the development of bigger, stronger bones. The two are highly correlated, highly correlated. So this is literally called Wolf's Law. Go home tonight and Google Wolf's Law and you'll learn about this guy. This is 